Hi, my name is Dale Odland, and today I'm going to demonstrate how I uh, set up my teepee. Um, I know there's many different ways to set up a teepee, and no particular way is the right way or the best way or the strongest way, but this is how I learned. Um, I was showing how to set up teepee this way about 30 years ago by an older gentleman who um, learned how to set up teepee like this back in the 50s. And uh, he learned it from a gentleman who uh, was showing this technique around 1900. So one of the first things we do when we're going to set up teepee is um, we look the ground over and we have a beautiful day here today. But the first thing we want to look for is low spots. We don't want our teepee to uh, be in a low spot if it's raining. So look for little pieces of high ground. Um, there's some valleys down in there we want to avoid. Um, it's a beautiful fall day. We have uh, red sumac growing in full bloom over there. We want to watch for rocks. I see some rocks out here. Um, we want to watch for poison ivy, poison nettles, sharp sticks, um, rodent holes, say badger holes, and uh, the ground here looks really good. I think I'm going to set the poop up. There's a rock. There's a rock. Put the teepee up, probably right in here on top of this little knoll. So uh, let's get started. Okay, now at this point we uh, have our site selected, so it's uh, kind of the first step is to spread out your canvas. Teepees used to be made out of buffalo hide, but we use canvas now, and uh, we inspect for holes. A lot of times uh, mice get in and will chew a hole through a folded up teepee and you'll see a teepee set up with um, patches about every two or three feet and that's a clear indication that a mouse has chewed his way through. But I store this in a, a mouse proof container. But uh, our next step after we inspect our canvas for holes, rips, tears, mice chewing. Um, we lay our poles out and we're going to measure them. And to measure these poles to fit this teepee, we lay out what we call our north and south pole here. From the bottom of the teepee to what I call the apex. And down here at the bottom, we have about a hand's width down here. And then up here at the apex, which is where all the poles meet, I've marked it here. You can see different times I've marked it. I've kind of perfected my marks a little bit here as I go. Uh, one time I used black paint. And then this is the door pole. Now the door pole is longer than the north south pole. And uh, the door pole, of course, the reason it's called door pole is because it's closest to the door. And we want to leave that sticking out at the bottom about a hand's length too. And we're going to mark this door pole right at the apex so we know where to tie these. Now you can tell this teepee's been used a lot. It's heavily smoked. Uh, this teepee is about 12 years old. Um, yeah, I believe I made it like 12 years ago. And so now the next step I'm going to show you is... Uh, bit on the rope and how I make the proper knot that will hold this up so it will not fall down. So uh, we're going to 
stop rolling here and when we come back I'll show you how to tie the knot and this cover won't be here anymore and we'll then we'll put the poles up. Show the apex again. Huh? The apex again. The apex is where all the poles will meet. Underneath here, this is called the tie tape for our lifting pole. And uh, a lot of TPs makers don't put these in, but these are these triangular pieces are called gores. They're very important. And then of course up here we have our smoke flap pockets for our smoke flap holes. And we'll demonstrate all that in a little bit later too. Each of these poles too is marked. I have a mark here about center pole so when I need to grab it I can just grab it. I know this is center. I know this is center point right where this mark is. So they're easier to handle that way. I got most of my poles marked with a center mark. foot teepee and uh, get my boots on here bring the rope over okay like in this step this is the most important part of setting up a teepee is your tripod now in the last step, you just saw how we measured the tripod and how we marked it at the apex. So we have those marks up there. But what's really important is to have these poles laid out like this on top. Now we got one pole called the south pole. The other one's the north pole. And those were the two that were up, the shorter ones from the bottom of the teepee to the apex. And then we put the door pole on top of them two. And then if you come down here and see, you're going to see a shovel down here. And this shovel is stuck in the ground right at the base of the south pole. Now why that is, is because when we tie our knot and we lift these poles up, we don't want the tripod to slip on us and be sliding across the prairie. And so that's why we have this shovel here. So this is very important to have these three poles like this, this main tripod. Now another very important aspect about the tripod is how they're tied. And to tie these three tripod poles together we use what's called a clove hitch knot and the clove hitch knot is very important because it is the only knot that gets tighter the more force that's put against it and I'm going to show you here briefly how to tie a clove hitch knot it's hard to explain but um, I'll try my best um, I want to start out with six or eight feet. I don't want to tie my clove hitch knot right at the end of the rope. Now to do clove hitch knot, what I do is I just make like a loop like this and I put one, this part, underneath. So I got one over and one under. Okay, just got a loop. And I make another loop like this and notice this one is on top and this one is under. So I got over and under. I think that's the best way I can explain it. Also, all I got to do now to finish off the knot is put one over like that and like that and the poles are all going to fit in here. Pull it tight and we'll have a tremendous amount of force locking these poles together. I also want to 
let's explain that this is a three quarter inch natural fiber rope. It's made out of Sisala. It's very smoked, you can see. And it's been in the teepee for the 12 years. And the end is whipped with cotton thread. And so this whipping actually, as it gets wet, it shrinks and tightens around the rope and that keeps this rope from fraying. This is also, um, it's 40 feet long and it needs to be 40 feet long for this size of teepee. So uh, let's go back to the clove hitch knot now and I'm just going to slip the clove hitch knot over the poles to where we made the markings. So I'll come up here and just start Lifting the flow hitch down these poles. And when I get to the markings, I'll pull the clove hitch tight. And you can see that's a very tight knot, but it's not where we're going to stop. And that's why we left this 8 feet section here on the end is because we're going to wrap that around and finish it off with half hitches. So uh, we'll do that. Let's just try getting that as, about as tight as we can. Now what's important is we've got to move our door pole to where we know the door is at and then we're going to tighten this knot up just as tight as we can get it. So we'll go down here. And I've had this pole pre-marked. This is my smoke flat pole. We've got some marks on it. I just set it to the, the butt to the south end pole. I take my door pole and I'll work it down where the door is going to be. And the door always faces E. So that's why we keep using these terms like this north, and south, and door. When we say door, we mean east. So here's my smoke flat pole. And here's the markings on it. So this is where I know, generally, where my door pole has to be. And we don't have to uh, butt this down or anything when we're lifting it. The only one we butt down is the south pole. So let's go back up here to the apex and finish off this clove hitch knot. And uh, make sure we got everything good and tight. And here's just a clove hitch. That is very tight. And now we're going to wrap it around. We're going to put a half inch in, half hitch in. Finish it off with two half hitches because they say two half hitches can hold the devil. There we are. That's our knot.
Now as we lift these poles into position, this knot, even if it is a little loose right now, will get tighter. And as we uh, lift, the only pole I'm going to move is this north pole. And once I get the butt of the north pole about to this general direct route about to this general area I know I'm in the vicinity where I got to put the North Pole down and then the tripod will be locked and I always have an assistant help me with this 40 foot roll okay now in this part what we'll do is um, we're going to raise the tripod and so I'm just going to start lifting this, and um, I won't have my assistant uh, putting any tension on this rope until I tell him to, because that doesn't need much pulling. It doesn't need much strength. So I'll just start lifting the tripod. And when I get to about this point, that's when I ask my assistants to help. And he's taking weight off of this for me. As you can see, this is a very large tripod. Now the only pole I'm going to move out is the north pole. And when I move this north pole into position, it'll lock this tripod a little bit more. So right now I'm starting to lock this tripod. Now I use my measurements on my smoke flap pole, so I know I have these the equal distance or the right distance apart here. That's very close. Now your north pole is always a little bit farther away from the door pole than your south pole. So I have an extra mark on there for that. And that is right on too. Good guesswork. Another thing I like to do is I just like to get back and make sure this is I like to look it over. Square it up a little bit. And I also want to go off a ways and I want to look at them back poles and make sure that they have, I don't want to say a 45 degree slant to them towards the door pole, but you don't want them straight up and down either because then when you put the rest of your poles in, I've seen a number of teepees fall over backwards when people make that mistake. So I'm going to go over here and just uh, take a peek at how they look. And that looks good. They're uh, leaning to the east. That shovel is straight up and down. So you can kind of use that shovel as a plumb line and see that they are tilting towards the east, towards the door. Well, our next step is just to start putting our poles in. So uh, we'll get the poles over here and then we'll start rolling again. Okay, now that we have our tripod up, it's our door pole, we got our south pole, got our north pole. Here's our three-quarter inch piece of manila rope. I'm just going to demonstrate how strong this is. I'm hanging here. I'm about 215 pounds and this is holding me up. I've actually climbed this rope and sat up there in this tripod before. 
So this is very strong. And then in the next step, we're going to put in our first four poles here. And they go on the north side of the door pole. So I'm going to start, just going to start putting in my first four poles. And they go in this first uh, kind of Y shape, or first, I guess, right in there. You can tell right up that apex. That's where I first pull those. Now I know how, how wide the door is, so that's where I'll, I'll put that. And here comes the second one. And that goes right on top, right in there. Now it looks a little awkward, and the farther you go along, it even looks a little more awkward. But that's the way we want it, because we want the majority of the poles to be in this front crotch. always looks a little odd. Looks like it's kind of out of place. But this is the way we want it. And as we spread these out, it'll, they'll get a little more, uh, they'll just get a little more comfortable up there. Now we'll go over here and put these four in. And we'll just uh, go to the other side and start putting the poles in right on top of the last four we put in. They all go in the front crotch. Now you see, if we didn't have that uh, tripod right, with all this weight going in the front, that tripod might just go backwards on it. right in here and rest right against this north pole and it just barely touches that touching the south pole 
and so you have that support there. Next one goes in the same, same place. It's right on top of that one. Bring it all the way over here. It goes into the crotch and then I bring it out. And then that's the closest one to the uh, south pole. Okay, next we'll uh, get our spade again. We're going to put that down. We're going to put our cover on the lifting pole and lift the cover into place. And that's going to go right up there, right at the apex. Okay, now at this point we have our uh, cover spread out. Normally when we put this up, we don't have it spread out like this. But because we showed you how to measure the poles, we spread it out. Normally at this point, um, when we put it away we roll it up almost like a jelly roll on two sides and so then we have this big jelly roll and we just roll it out and and then I have a narrow canvas here with the smoke side up and I know exactly where to tie it because this is my lifting pole and I have marked this before like I have a blue mark here and I know that goes on this line and then I have some blue marks here that uh, go just above this knot, this beautiful knot in this lifting pole. And then that helps um, hold this canvas all up here too. And so I'm going to start tying with a few half hitches on here. And then I'm going to come back over and this real tough part of canvas here, I'm going to finish up with some knots right above that. So. I got plenty of tie tape here when I made this teepee, so I have time, plenty of crisscrossing and extra to work with here. So we're just going to start tying real tight knots. And like I said, I'm going to finish off even on that tough piece of canvas there. Okay. And we also have our spade again because when I get under this and start lifting it up, there's an awful lot of pressure. And um, we don't want that to, uh, that pole to start slipping across the slippery grass on the prairie. And, uh, this is going to be a little cumbersome because usually we have it rolled up, but this time it's it's out. At least we're lucky we don't have any high wind today. And once we get it up and we'll get the cover around the poles, then we'll explain how to uh, tie the tie tapes together and put the lacing pins in. So I'll start by just getting under it and gathering this up. Down. And I want to make sure that this lifting pole stays on the north side of my door pole when I'm up in that. Make sure 
I'm on the north side of the door pole. So here I am, putting it in the apex on the north side. And we can take our spade out. And I'm sure glad we had the spade there because it sure dug up a lot. It, it really helped to have that there. And then we just spread the canvas around each side, making sure that our uh, smoke flat, flat pockets don't get tucked in. Here we are at our door pool. Now at this point I just kind of want to size it up and make sure I got things centered up pretty good. Um, I have some red dots. I don't know if you can see them in here. But these red, red dots That's the exact center of the rear of the teepee. So I want my lifting pole to be right on them red dots. Just like so. Okay. And I kind of look around the bottom to make sure I don't have any poles that are sticking out really weird or too far. And this is looking pretty good. Right at this point, we're going to, um, I'll go get a box to stand on, and we'll uh, place this thing up. Okay, at this point, we got the cover wrapped around the frame, and these are the tie tapes that will tie the two halves together, and then we're going to go in with these lacing pins and put them in. And I'll demonstrate how to put them in, but I just want to show you how beautiful these lacing pins are. Uh, my daughter, Angelica, made these beautiful lacing pins for me. And for our, our home, our teepee. And Angelica died. She passed away from cancer about, well, last February. And uh, she took the time to wood burn these marks around and skin each one, wood burn the marks and then we smoked them too and so I just want to still thank Angelica for being part of our home and our teepee and I always look kind of look for the skinniest uh, lacing pins first because there's the, they're the easiest ones to put in so I'll grab a few of the skinnier ones here first you tie this and you tie this with just a bow tie being left, this being right. Start your lacing pin in the first hole, go into this hole, tuck it through, and then come out that side. Same again, left over right, through the hole, through the second hole, and then we we'll just work our way down towards the bottom. I like my stouter sticks near the bottom because they receive a lot of traffic down there and 
they hold the door up. That, I got a pretty big stick in that one. Let's find the skinny one. There we go. And they also have a little smoke and I think she put a coating of beeswax on them just to uh, beeswax really makes these keeps these threads stronger. Tent makers have been waxing their tent threads for years with beeswax and it does add a lot of strength. Down here at the bottom of the tent, I want my stoutest sticks because this receives a lot of traffic down here, a lot of beating. As you can see, a grizzly bear tried to get in here one night and tore it up. And I still got to paint his bear claws on there. Now, the next thing we'll, we're going to do is we're going to go in back inside the teepee and we're going to push the poles out a little bit, tighten up the cover. And then we'll stake it down. And we still want to make sure things are all looking real nice and centered. So it looks pretty good up front. But it's still real baggy, so we want to push these posts out, get the slack out of it. And I like to have my teepee close to the ground. I believe that, you know, I know for sure originally that the buffalo hide teepees were always close to the ground. They didn't have these uh, teepees you see nowadays set up where they set them up maybe almost, it's a 16 foot teepee, but they set it up two feet off the ground to make it look like an 18 footer. But, uh, I don't think it's should be like that. It should be close to the ground. Not on the ground, but close enough to keep the drafts out. And that's the lifting pole, so I'll we'll keep him up. Okay, now I'm just going to come, it's just a few inches off center here, so I'm going to bring this, pull this edge over here a little bit. Another thing I like to do at this point is uh, 
throw this anchor rope up tight and then give it some at least four good wraps around and then throw the anchor rope back in. So I throw it out the smoke hole like this. And then, then as I'm pulling this, you can see these poles tightening up. Now I'll go around the teepee and do this all the way around. Since I've gone around four times, I'm going to throw this back in. And then we'll anchor it down. Okay, at this point, we're ready to uh, start staking the teepee down. But I want to talk a little bit about the stakes. Uh, most of these stakes are made out of ash wood. There's a few choke cherry stakes. Uh, but with these stakes, we whip the top with cord cotton cord and then uh, we paint pine tar over that and that preserves the top of the stakes so they last a lot longer and then we use a stone hammer to uh, pound the stakes in and that mushrooms out the head of these stakes and creates a very strong uh, surface to pound on and I'm not replacing stakes every year. Some of the stakes have lasted quite a while. Um, this is an old stone hammer set in a piece of maple and rawhide. So we'll begin staking down the teepee. Um, we'll begin at the front, pull it tight, and we'll go out the back and then we'll work our way around. the front ones and then we'll go to the back. So as you can see it takes quite a bit of force to stake these in. I put them through the loops, give it a few twists, and then start staking it down. 
not going all the way down on it yet. And some of these very large ones like this one, I'll use as an anchor inside. So I'll just toss that inside for later. And let's go do a few in the back. I will go around later and really make sure these are really secure into the ground. But just for now, I'm just kind of stretching the canvas out. As you can see, I can really wind up and pound these. And because of the whipping, I'm not having any problems with the stake shattering. Okay, hi again. We got the um, outside all staked down. It looks real good. And now we're gonna put in our anchor. I'm gonna show you how to put the anchor in and how to secure the anchor rope to the anchor pegs. Uh, the anchor stakes, we want real large stakes because we get very high winds here. I've had teepees survive over 65 mile an hour winds in this very location. So to start out, we found a big choke cherry uh, stake here. And we're going to pound it in at almost 45 degree angle. And we are going to pound it down almost to the just about as far down as we can get it in the ground. Another thing about this I got to talk about is uh, selection of the site. You want your anchor rope to, technically it should be in the middle of the teepee because if you're going to get a, a north wind, you want that rope to be, you wouldn't want it on the south side because it wouldn't do any good there. If you got south winds and you had the rope on the north side, that wouldn't do you any good either. So technically, the best place for the anchor rope is exactly in the center. And that way you can keep the rope at its shortest point. But because we put a fire in the center, we want to put it back a little bit. So that's why I'm not putting it exactly center, but it, it is back center. Okay, now that's going to hold pretty good. But we're going to do two. And we're going to crisscross them. And you can see the mushroom mushrooming going on with the stick. And I don't even care about that because we have the stick whipped. We got whipping on the stake. So it can mushroom all at once. It's only getting stronger every time it mushrooms out. There. Now we have them in the ground very far. I'll take the anchor rope. Run it through the bottom of the X, like so. And then I just start going around, like this. 
and I do try to get that rope, the anchor rope, included in that X while I'm doing this. So wrapping like that. And we just finish it off through the bottom. And that's why we have a 40 foot rope because you can see it. It's taken the whole 40 feet of this three quarter inch Sicilia rope. And I'm really tightening this down. And then we have a nice neat anchor position there. And it's a good place to put tools, your uh, ceremonial items, or whatever. Um, we're not going to do anything with the liner at this point. It was just a demonstration on how to set up the teepee. Uh, liner, decorations, fire, teepee etiquette, all of that will be in another video. Hopefully my wife will uh, host that video. Okay, so now that we have the TP anchored down well and it's staked down, you can see, we are going to put our smoke flat poles in position. To do this, you just grab your smoke flat pole and look for this pocket and insert it into the pocket. Uh, when you get it into the pocket, you can fight this thing or you can kind of let it do its own work. And what I mean by letting it do its own work, I have the pole resting on the ground down here. But I'm applying pressure upwards like this. But I'm not lifting the whole pole. I'm letting the ground hold the pole as I push this up. And so there, we have that smoke flap pole in position. Now we can come and do the other side. Like I say, just look for the pocket. Try to let the ground do a little work. Hold it. Just got the pole resting on the ground as I'm pushing upwards. As I'm doing so, the pole is going in the pocket further. And there. Now because of the anchor rope, as you look up there at the apex, the anchor rope is kind of lapped over my gore a little bit. So I'm going to open the flap up all the way. I'm going to bring it down and get, take care of that little fold there. And I'll take a look at it on this side and see if it came out. Looks like I got to go a little more. And that's pretty good. And I noticed on the other side I had the same problem, so let's go over here and look at this side. I don't like the way the rope is affecting that gore, so I'm going to bring this smoke flap down to take care of that.
That way I have a very small circumference up there when it starts to rain. There isn't much of a hole for the rain to come in. Now let's go over to the front. There's a number of things I can do with the smoke flaps at this point. I do have a, a large stick that I uh, tie here and then I just stake it down. Or I can open it up and tie these to the uh, big loop or the stakes. We'll just do a little demonstration like that. Um, the next video when we talk more about PP etiquette, we'll talk more about adjusting the smoke flaps and how to do that. One last thing I want to talk about. Okay, I'll open them up for some fresh air. Let's keep some air in there. And we'll keep a little light in, in there for now. Well, we're uh, getting near dark. Got my door here. It's just an oval door, but I really like it because it has these three sticks in here. And I'll show you why. Here's the hang it on the second lacing pin. And then it covers the whole door completely. And then if I want to lock it, I just go to this lacing pin and I can get it to basically lock. Then when I have high winds, and say a high wind is coming from the north here, it catches this. This stick actually prevents it and just keeps the door closed. And vice versa, if the wind's from the south, it just can't force this door open and fly, flop around in the wind. And another thing I really enjoy about this door is that the way you can put this door away when it's not in use. If you got dinner outside and people are coming in and out, companies here, I take this flap, and I put it through this flap. And then I just roll like this, grab this flap, and tuck it onto that lacing pin. And so that way, the door is open and people are welcome to come in. Closing, just as easy as undoing that. Let it fall. And we're ready to go visiting. Um, next video too, we'll talk about the uh, designs and the painting and uh, some of the other details that we just didn't uh, hit on in this video. Thank you.